whisper, whisper my way into Tum Talk Tuesday. It's all good. We're in. What's good? What's good? How you guys doing? This is the, uh, is it the SMAR? What is it? <laughs> What's good, everyone? Thanks for hopping on here. Appreciate y'all. What is good? I'm on daddy duties. Oh, man, it's been been pretty wild. Babysitter, which is my mom's, is not feeling so good. So I'm stuck having to uh, get everything going for the show uh, while also making sure the babies are fed and and happy, of course. So what's good? Zash, how you doing? Hello, hello. We are almost time, man. It's like 25 days away from the show. Uh, should be a good time. Laughing Ace, what's good? Should be a good time. We're doing walkthroughs uh, almost every other day. So you guys are going to be seeing the series of uh, little micro episodes that Alex and I are putting together. Um, that EJ is helping us edit as well too. And I'll, oops, come on, my guy Eric right there as well too. There it is, there it is. So we'll quickly just go over. Um, yeah, uh, go far from it. Uh, we're quick to just go over like this stats, of course, uh, of Union Marketplace, where we're at right now. Uh, but I want to talk cards today. You know, yesterday, Alex and I got to go to a, got to go to a small little trade night in Temecula, CNC in the building. And um, it was a good time. I got to meet some people locally over there in Temecula. The trade night was at a Buffalo Wild Wings. And... Um, you know, if you guys are into cards, I suggest that you guys do this on a constant basis. Like we're always encouraging people to break out, start your own little trade night, even your own small little show or even a massive show. Like I don't think there's enough uh, hubs out there. So if you guys are able to create one wherever you're from, hit us up and we want to help you guys out, give you some advice, whatever it may be, um, because I think that's just a, another way for us to contribute into this hobby. Um uh, Grow it within the community that you're familiar with, all right? So that would be pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, yesterday, it was a pretty awesome trade night over at Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, I was able to pick up some cards, and I was actually really excited to do so. So uh, I want to talk about cards today. That's that's primary. The progress is going for Pachanga as well. Um, and also, just to let you guys know, like we, we're not stopping at Pachanga. we got many other things happening in place uh there he is right there what's good dude what up bro i got what you i got you oh, next to me all the yeah, time this is near and today. near and dear oh, in my dude, heart my it. snorlax sanchez uh, right there. <laughs> <laughs> what's good dude you just what shaved up? look at you man yeah, you couldn't man. shave yesterday for the camera but you had to shave today I we shaved yesterday so thanks for noticing oh my bad yeah, yeah. i didn't shave uh, i guess i just didn't look at you long enough i guess it's not like we were together like yesterday for eight hours. Thought, yeah, right. <laughs> no, we did. I finally sure. had to tap out. I finally had to tap out at the end, dude. Oh, dude, I know. It's all good. We made it happen, though. It was a good time. All right, so quickly, I was telling them right now that I wanted to really talk about cards. Yesterday, we went to a trade night. And if yeah. you see me bouncing, it's because I obviously got to keep this one asleep. We got 20 minutes to talk. And, uh, dude, this guy's naps have just been shorter and shorter. So if you see me bouncing, I'm on a medicine ball right now, or a Swiss ball, whatever those are called. Uh, doing no crunches stop. on him. He's an, he's an animal. He doesn't it. stop. Dad, the dadding doesn't stop ever. No, that's 24-7. But that's part of the reason why we do this, though, you know? And um, that's the fun part about the, about the shows that we're producing is that we try to make it so that way it's not just a business transaction. You go in, you go and try to buy and flip cards, you know? It's... I think you and I have always had that vision of bringing in younger, a younger crowd, um, people that are brand new to the industry, being innovative and shaking hands with people and inviting them into the community. And uh, that's something that you and I are really adamant about when it comes down to it. I mean, Ultimate Pastime, who just hopped in, is a perfect example of inviting people into this beautiful hobby uh, through information and shaking hands. So, uh, Mark, what's up, man? Good to see you. So... Yeah, let's, uh, what's it called? Before we, we move on and talk about cards, I want to talk about the three cards that we had that I picked up yesterday. Um, yeah. But, yeah, tell us about uh, Street Team. Where were you at on on Saturday? Yeah, so on Saturday, we were out at the Temecula Valley All-Star Tournament, uh, which turned out to be a huge success. 
and the fact that the reception was great. Uh, we got to meet a lot of new people in that area, in and around that Temecula area. Yeah. Uh, and then we also got to meet with some organizers from other leagues that were there because they have different districts that are uh, playing against each other in this all-star tournament. Um, so it was a really good uh, networking opportunity as far as the youth sports programs goes. Um, and it was a really good opportunity to really see and, and connect with people that, especially the adults that were there that were super interested. Yeah. In, what we had going on and, and again the nostalgia kicks in and they start telling me about these collections that they had i'll have this baseball like another guy had a, a collection that was passed down by his dad uh, so hearing about that and then giving them a little bit of advice on what how i think they should navigate and go from here with their collections is, is always cool and interesting and i think people are really 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 excited for this pachanga show it's hard for me to really pinpoint it sometimes on what it is that makes it so different than all these other events but I think part of it's the anticipation of coming back to it. You know, obviously oh. we were there before. Um, and so it, it's just really cool to see. And then people are familiar with the, the name Pachanga yeah. too. So when you say that to people, when you let people know that's where it is, they're like, oh, oh Pachanga. And, and you know, obviously there's people who are interested in, in all the other things that Pachanga has to offer. So it's definitely something cool that we have going for us. And again, connecting. I mean, I think. Community. Of course, we want to give the credit to Pachanga and having the name there. But honestly, the the biggest difference from this show in Pachanga compared to our other events is that the amount of effort and the amount of strategy that we actually put towards this event, I think, is the same amount that we put into the last two years combined. I mean, you you, you going out there on a daily basis, uh, you know, doing your street team work. Uh, me constantly having to call and try to figure out sponsorships and logistics. Uh, we actually have a team now. C CNC doesn't sleep. Him and his team don't sleep in creating content for us. Um, you know, like it's just a con. It's a it's a twenty four hour monster right now is what the Union Marketplace has become, and I can say that with full confidence because our Slack does not turn off, dude. We used to shut it off at four or five o'clock and it'd be family time. And now it's just it's nothing like that. I mean, no. I'm sorry, but I'm one of the guilty ones. You know, 2 a.m. last night, I sent over a Google Doc. And uh, that's uh, we're constantly working. Someone in the team is constantly working. I think that's the reason why we're feeling that our name is, or at least the, the event itself is starting to get recognized. And um, it just shows, man, hard work is always going to pay off. There's no shortcuts to it. Uh, we have to go out. I mean... You know, we put out 75 flyers right outside of Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, look at that, dude. Rick right here just handed out 30 flyers for us on Saturday. We got the entire team. And regardless if you're officially part of the TUM team or not, if you guys have been a vendor of ours or even just an attendee of ours, just follow us on Instagram. Like, we have a 24-hour machine now that's able to help us spread the word a lot faster. So, Rick, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Get your NASCAR cards ready, baby. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, but, and another thing yeah. I'd like to kind of piggyback on that, I think a lot of people feel the difference too. They're kind of like, oh, dang, like there's another octane level that these guys are operating on now that we're not oh, yeah. accustomed to, you know, and, and, I, and I get that a lot. And I think we had the system so, so dialed in now that no, he's awake. Dude. He's awake. So he's alive. <laughs> he's alive. But not having that system so dialed in now that for us it almost like feels like we're pulling back a little bit from certain areas to give to other areas of the business a little bit more. So yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's cool to see, interesting to see the evolution, obviously, of the unit marketplace, and I'm excited to see where it goes in another year from now. Well, I mean, scaling is a big thing for any company, right? And for us. We can't stay at where we were for the longest time and, and try and still fulfill the vision that we are walking towards. So that's why we're constantly having to work um, and building a team. I mean, yesterday was awesome. Like we, uh, you guys will see the video here. We're doing these mini series and Alex does a walkthrough from the, the lobby all the way inside the venue. It's only one third of the space, uh, but RT, like it, it wasn't just me and you anymore. You know, uh, we had Manny there, we had Corey there, we had Alicia there. Um, and then we're talking about staff, like how many people it actually takes to produce one show. I mean, we're looking to, we're probably going to hire close to like 20, 25 people just for, just to run this two day event. 
Um, so it's, uh, what's it called? We're, we're starting to slowly understand the scalability of our company, uh, which I think is very exciting because now really we can say to the moon because we know how to, or at least are a little more um, aware of what we need to do to get to the moon. First, I mean, we got to get the rock ship up, you know, and then eventually we'll, we'll be hitting that. But, you know, so Pachanga wise, still obviously vendor tables were sold out. Uh, very thankful for that. Um, I hope that the ones that missed out on the table, uh, Anthony, what's good? I hope the ones that missed out on the table uh, have give us an opportunity at Del Mar. Uh, we have that one coming up. Del Mar is uh, October 6, 7, and 8, three day event uh, over at a much larger venue, almost twice the size. And uh, we're excited to be able to release some information on that. But right now, our head is down, make sure that Pachanga is our main focus. And also our kids are our main focus and, uh, you know, and marketing the heck out of this thing. So that way, when you go out there and what you're feeling is just now a normal, um, normal feel for the union marketplace. Right, Maxwell? Yeah, he's saying, what's up? Uh, but yeah, so yesterday I picked up three cards. I talked about it briefly during the, during, uh, just right after the show. Um, and, you know, I, like these are the three cards right here. So these are, like I was saying during the video, I yeah, had that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that one's yeah. really cool. That, that, this one really is cool super backstory. cool. Like I, my big thing always is the cards that have a backstory like that. I think yeah. that tell that tell a story. I, I love hearing about that, and, and I think they, in my in my eyes, they become a lot more. I want them a lot more for sure. And, and you know, we're gonna be. I know for a lot of people here as well too. A big part of our audience, our experts, are already uh, know about cards so when we talk about basic stuff really it's because alex and i are really working really hard to try to bring in new people and the best way to have them feel invited is to educate them so when we speak about cards and it's extremely basic like mentioning this is psa it's a 10 that is the highest grade you can get it's called a gem mint uh just just understand it's because we want the new people to not be intimidated with what they're going to see at the union marketplace uh these are just a very small portion of all the insanity that they're going to be able to see. And the last thing we want is for us to invite someone new into the hobby and be overwhelmed because they have no knowledge of what they're actually looking at. So I'd like for us to just get more educational in terms of our content. So that way we can, when we do invite someone, they have like a blueprint of like, oh, okay, I know what a PSA is versus a BGS. And I know what a 10 is versus a nine and simple things like that. That way, this little guy can understand, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yesterday, we talked about um, prospecting and and legends. And uh, this is Maxwell. He just woke up. He is he, he looks big, but he's actually only in, like, the 15th percentile in size. So, he needs to gain some weight, dude. But, yeah, he's getting there. But, yeah. So, um, did you, I know you said you had some questions about that. Like, what kind of questions did you have as far as, for, like, prospecting versus buying legends? Yeah, well, I mean, yesterday when I saw you pick up those cards, I think my first question was like, "Bro, I that? know, you, Yo. I know you don't know who these guys are. Like, <laughs> what's the logic or reasoning behind this right here?" And you're like, "I, I don't know, dude. They just buy I don't them. know. I don't know. I, you know, I mean, just like what what Mark always says, buy what you like. I like the Padres. So these." So anyone that's going into the show, if you're a big baseball fan, uh, you know, the Bowman first, uh, the prospect cards, uh, these are the ones that are sought after. Those are the ones that you want to first get into. It's their official rookie card, which to me kind of doesn't make sense because there's college cards for, for basketball and football, but they're just not as liked as baseball is, even though these are they're not even in the big leagues yet. I just looked them up. I actually looked them up after I purchased these cards. Oh, and no, no, not the comps. I, I can care less about the comps. Yeah. What I care about is, are they still in the league? Because <laughs> I don't even have a comp if they're not in the league you anymore. You didn't look that up before you bought them? Uh, one of them did. I did look up one of them. Actually, this guy seems like he's a baller. So he's got a good eye. He gets a, he gets on base pretty well. So we'll see how that goes. And then obviously, that's your the legends. <laughs> I know, right? For sure. But I, for me, the fun part, the gamification of cards. Like, you have... You have your TCG cards where there's actual utility to these cards, right? Trading card games, TCG. And you think of these sports cards as not having any utility outside of collecting. But to me, I think flipping cards 
is a part of the game. Like that is part of of a game that we all play within this with this hobby or just collecting in general. Do you agree with that or? Um. Yeah, I agree with that. I do agree yeah. with that. Right. Yeah. Like, it's really rare for someone just to go in and and what's it called and just get cards to collect, but they go in and they try to have some sort of flip to it, right? And I don't know, like, I know you've done it. You've done it for us before. And what was your experience when it came down to buying and selling cards? Because you did that for four months straight, heavy. I can tell you this. If you ever want to learn about something, put your money into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You learn really, (laughs) really, really quick. They, you know, you're where your treasures is your heart. And and I didn't, a lot of these, of those cards and transactions are made. I'd have learned very, very quickly, but shit if i if i can do it then i know that anybody can do it uh, and you there's so much opportunity you know there's so much opportunity to understand trends so much opportunity to learn about things and, and time things learn about timing of yeah. different cards because obviously seasons will change and the value of these cards fluctuate um so what do you look into when you're prospecting just like i did with these guys right like yeah when i'm prospecting i try to look at a couple of different things so i try to look at marketability of that of that player I think that's a huge one, right? Because okay. hype was yeah, everything's so hype driven, and then I also yeah. try to to if it's a sport that I'm familiar with, then I'll try to look at it and almost do some do some, some personal prospecting on it and seeing like, okay, what do I like? Do I like this guy's court vision, or do I like this guy's? Um, I mean, I already know the example, yeah, but give me give me an example. Who is this person you're talking about? Right now? <laughs> well, well, let's just talk. Let's just say. Um, let me think of uh, uh, let's just say a running back. I won't, I won't even I won't even get too specific, mm-hmm. but a running back's a super complex position to where it, you know the the these guys are getting beat up every single play. So you have to factor that kind of stuff. Your in. And I know that I know the market's not a huge <laughs> it's Lance back, right but, now, Rick. Yeah, but um, but you can definitely see some little nuances in players and and, and watching them and what they're capable of and see how that's going to transition into the. Into the, into the pros, um, and I like really doing that. I think it's hard running back because the market's really not there. But even even uh, quarterback, C- CMC, he doesn't want to admit it. The Jordan Poole pickups that he was making there, so <laughs> that's what we were trying to get to. It was like, come on, give us the prospect that you actually looked at. I didn't, and I you're wanted, using I these to, things. I wanted to stay away from Jordan Poole because he, he, and I still believe in Jordan Poole big time. I but I think, yeah. I think he he has a marketability. He seems to be a, a real funny guy and. On top of that, he can score. He's quick. He's he's agile, and they, those are all things that I saw in him. But I mean, this maturity is a huge thing. And I think yeah. it's supporting cast. I mean, you can't ask for a better supporting cast. I think there's so many different factors into that whole situation, and I think him getting punched in the mouth probably didn't help. You know, probably didn't help a lot. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a little, yeah, yeah, little more yeah. gun shy. Yeah, a little more gun shy. Changing that dynamic of that Thanks, team. Thanks, Christian. Appreciate it. But that was an example. Yeah. Everybody knows I was a big uh, Jordan Poole fan, I, you know, a prospect. I mean, you know, like I have my own version of Jordan Poole, right? So this is Zach Levine, for example. Yeah, but and he, I think, he, he shows flash of the greatness too. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's that's the thing about sports cards is that I personally like just like to buy people that I enjoy watching. And Zach Levine being a dunk champion, you know, and having some iconic dunks that is still being talked about, um, probably one of the best dunkers in – you know, in the dunk contest that's ever entered, right? And uh, that was someone that I prospected that for about three or four years now. And that's the thing about what's fun about cards when I talk about the gamification of cards and prospecting. And part of it is just doing the research. Like you were saying, are they are they marketable? Uh, like this guy, Cole Anthony, right? Like another prospect that we have who's fun to watch um, and who has flashes of greatness. And part of the game of collecting cards is not necessarily just keeping it in the personal collection uh, because it's all be real. There's a price for everything. There are a couple of cards in here. Like I was telling you before was that I, the price is so ridiculous. That I, if someone pays it, I'll have to say yes, because it's completely like it's a thousand percent over comps, for example. Right. Uh, but I feel like that's the biggest part. That's the game part of collecting is just the prospecting. And um, I want to really touch in on that a little bit more today uh, because yesterday I touched in on it for like about a minute, um, but I'm sure people were like, well, what do you mean by that? So I wanted to kind of get your two cents as well too as far as for like when you were 
flipping cards and and buying left and right because you did that for a while for for us yeah you know you what did you look at and uh yeah. how was the experience for you yeah i think so for me you you i really had to understand what was trending so there's always something that's trending at that moment um i think we're gonna see a huge trend in, in wimby cards for instance so kind of bracing yourself for for certain trends you may see and then also where the demographic of people that you are so when i'm in dallas at yeah. that time like i knew that luca and would sell so i had yeah. to be really mindful of where i was going geographically that's a great idea yeah. when i was when i was flipping and then you know kobe's in la any lakers in in southern california are gonna be a lot easier to move than you know if you're in chantilly for instance you know exactly. so i looked at things i looked at things like that um i also looked at the uh timing of the season and when we they were going to be in season when they were when they would be on the decline it's funny because i was kind of kicking myself in the, in the butt a little bit during yeah. these nba playoffs because yeah i was super high on jamal murray before he got injured and then when he got injured i think i had bought some a little bit more jamal murray um because he was That's good. Just absolutely he was absolutely balling yeah. when i saw him play in the bubble i was a he firm was believer in, was in this dude's skill yeah. in, in basketball and be able in his ability to create plays and i was like dang like I, no one's talking about no one's talking about him no one's i no know a whole lot Everyone forgot about, about him and you know fast Fast forward to 2023, those could have been, I think, some really, really good margins for cars for sure. if I would have stuck to that. Uh, yeah. play, that's, that's the biggest the difference for me between, you know, because I'm now heavy into the Pokemon game. Come on, let's go. I'm heavy into the Pokemon game and really just the TCG game now. I mean, yeah. I'm big into po uh, Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z. So that's, I would say, so 80% of my purchases so I'm not, I'm now. Not, I'm, not, I'm not super into the DBZ and, and Pokemon. Yeah. So and my question to you is what makes it, because we, we know why certain players will fluctuate. Yeah. Now, yeah. But what is it about the TCG and Dragon Ball Pokemon that makes it fluctuate? Well, it's because you're buying, you, you, they're guaranteed legends. You know, like their rookie year, they're already legends. You say Charizard, his first time ever coming out because they, they know it's a chase. You know, it's the, it's the baddest card in the set that's going to have an insane value to it, right? Not just value, but a collectability to it. So things like that, like Pikachu, obviously, is the mascot of Pokemon for the most part. And it's you're not prospecting with Pokemon cards, which is what's really fun, is that you just get to look at the art now. You get to actually enjoy the art pieces, like this one right here, you know, of Charizard tearing down on this uh on this city and um because you know they're all legends it just makes it easy because you don't have to prospect anymore you're bought you're just buying legends, on legends, on legends. and maxwell says you guys have already passed 20 minutes dude 20 minutes it's 20 minutes you guys have passed your time we always pass our time sorry max but anyways i i know we there's still so much that we can unpack when it comes down to talking cards and you already know with me i could talk cards all day long jordan agrees uh pikachu oh yeah more than charizard but it's uh it's this is the kind of stuff that you'll be able to see at the union marketplace and you'll see rare, super rare stuff like this one of one cronenworth another prospecting card for me but i mean dude it's a one of one and for me that's not gonna go that's not gonna leave the pc because i just like this guy's story and is also a padre so um, you're going to see a lot of super rare stuff like this that are one of one and you'll see a lot of common stuff like, you know, uh, like that Ichiro one is a pretty well, common card. There's still, will we see you Max know? there? That's what we really, Oh, want. Max is going to be around for sure. I'll Max, probably, you, I might Max, be wearing like a Charizard. Like? I might be wearing a Charizard uh, outfit, okay. but then with him in the baby might carrier. Be. You might, you're still, you're still on that. Sure. Uh, no, you will be. I got you a Snorlax. Don't worry. <laughs> I say what's up actually all right i know we kind of went on a tangent there i appreciate everyone that uh that hung around uh rick well, i appreciate now, you now, now, now he wants to stop uh, no. <laughs> hey we try to keep it under 20 you know attention span can is kind of tough right after that but um we appreciate everyone for hopping in here anything else you want to cover before we dip out and get back to work July 14th and 15th, guys. We, the, your support means the world to us, and we're really, really nice. excited to to get to this to this finish line. This has been one that we've really we we've really cracked the shell and 
had to had to figure out who we were with. So July yeah, 14th, yeah. 15th, come see. Let's have, let's have it all pay off, right, buddy? Absolutely, exactly. All the hard work, the 24 hours that we're working on this, the entire team. Um, I hope you guys can show out. Uh, Jordan, I appreciate you, man. We, we're actually all out of tables. Uh, we ran out of tables about 10 days ago. Uh, so hopefully you can join in on the fun. Um, there'll still be plenty of things to see. All right, y'all. Oh, right. get your tickets. Yes. Uh, lastly, get your tickets, please. Uh, if you don't, if you want to be able to skip the line, go a little bit faster, not have to wait in general admission, pre-purchase your tickets. We have our marketplace uh, porters that are going to be walking up and down the line, checking people in, making sure that you are not having to wait in that long line that is for general admission. So, so pre-purchase your tickets. Just go on our website. Uh, that way you can get into the marketplace a lot faster than just purchasing at the door. All right. Max says, what's up? Alex, I got this for you. Thank I'm going to find you one in a BGS 10. Yeah, Don't grading. worry. I know. Look at that. Alex, dude, you look so cute in here. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> All right. All, All right, right, bro. We'll see you. I'm sure we're going to talk again soon. Probably in five. Rick, uh, Rick, just to let you know, White Labs right now, we're going to be postponing it for this week. Um, what's it called? So we're just we're all in right now on Pachanga. Being 20 days away, we're going to highly focus on that. Um, but I'll, I'll touch base with you here pretty soon and keep you posted on that, all right? All right, guys. Alex says bye. Bye. <laughs>